What's going on, y'all? Today on Country Cast, we are going to be talking about the man himself, Mr. Johnny Cash. Now, I think that Johnny Cash's name is synonymous with the word music and not just country music. And the reason for that is because no matter what genre you find yourself listening to or what it is you prefer, Johnny Cash has most likely had some type of impact or some sort of influential song that you really have gravitated towards and it has just pulled you in and you have just learned so much from the man in black. And throughout all of the decades that Johnny Cash was involved with music, he was able to adapt and overcome all of the changes, all the way back from the 50s when he got started to 2003 at the end where he was still making music. His music continuously touched the lives of people all over the music industry, not just country. And he was able to uh, connect with those fans, connect with the artists in those genres, and people really respected him for that. And today we're going to be talking about Johnny Cash because he still needs to be talked about and there's a lot of things you may not know and he's done some really cool shit. So we're going to go ahead and get right into it. Thanks for joining us. Today we are talking about the man in black, Mr. Johnny Cash. So going ahead and getting right into it and we will start off at the very beginning before getting into some of those wilder moments that Cash found himself involved in throughout his career. So here we go. Johnny Cash was born back on February 26, 1932 in Kingsland, Arkansas and eventually moved to Dice, Arkansas at just three years old. And for those who may not know, J.R. Cash was actually Johnny Cash's birth name. That's right, you heard correctly. Johnny Cash only had initials for a name at first. There was no John, there was no Johnny. Johnny would actually come later in his life, which we will get to in just a moment. But first, how did he end up with the initials JR? Johnny's parents had somewhat of a difficult time making up their minds when it came to giving Johnny his name. His mother wanted to name him John and his father wanted to name him Ray. Ultimately, in the end, they decided on the initials JR, which would follow him throughout his younger years, along with his nickname Shudu, which came from his father. Real quick, we're going to jump forward all the way to 1950 when Cash joined the United States Air Force. And the reason is because this is where Cash gave himself the name of John R. Cash. Unfortunately, the recruiter for the Air Force at the time would not allow only initials when signing up. Therefore, Cash created John R. Cash, and from that moment on, little did he know, he would soon be introducing himself to fans across the world as Johnny Cash after signing with Sun Records in 1955. So now jumping back to Cash's younger years growing up and then being introduced to music, Cash actually received his first guitar from his mother when he was only 10 years old. And once he turned 12, that is when Cash started to write his own songs. Unfortunately, at age 12, Cash would also experience a very tragic loss within his family, someone who he was very close with, which was his brother, Jack. Jack passed away at the young age of 14 after cutting wood on a table saw. While cutting this wood, Jack was accidentally pulled into the saw and caused uh, extreme damage to his upper body. After a week of trying to fight the injury, Jack unfortunately did pass away. This incident though, however, impacted Johnny's life so tremendously that it sparked Cash's motivation and drive to start writing at the early age of only 12 years old. Now, six years after the passing of Cash's brother, Johnny graduated high school in 1950 and then went off to Detroit, Michigan, where he found a job working in an automobile factory. And like I mentioned earlier, in that same year, he also decided to join the United States Air Force after the start of the Korean War, where he became a Morse code operator interpreting Soviet Union transmissions. That's pretty wild. Now, just because Cash went into the military, that didn't stop him from working on his music. Cash brought along his guitar with him and continued to write songs. Only after his four-year stint in the military, Cash decided to get out, and that is when he married his first wife, Vivian Liberto, and the two moved to Memphis, Tennessee. 
During his time in Memphis, Cash went to radio and broadcasting school during the day. Then at night, he was playing country music gigs. He was also playing on local radio stations with Luther Perkins and Marshall Grant. Perkins and Grant were known as the Tennessee Two. I'm sure some of you may have heard of the Tennessee Three, but that actually did not come along until everyone met uh, the drummer W.S. Holland about five years later in 1960. But going back again, one year after playing and working to get noticed, Cash and the Tennessee Two finally got their opportunity to audition for Sun Records in 1955. But what's kind of crazy is Cash initially introduced himself to Sun Records as a gospel singer, but was told to leave that audition and then return when he had something more profitable. Johnny Cash obviously listened and returned to Sun Records where he presented his first single, the mega hit that we all know and love, Hey Porter. Hey Porter was released along with Cry 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 and it became the very first single for Johnny Cash. I guess you can say after that, the rest is history for the man in black and his wonderful music. It's truly hard to not recognize the amount of influence, passion, emotion, sorrow, pain, joy, and, and just the incredible amount of music that Cash has given us and produced over the years. From his first studio album, Johnny Cash, titled With His Hot and Blue Guitar, which featured phenomenal hits like I Heard That Lonesome Whistle, Cry Cry Cry, I Walked the Line, and Folsom Prison Blues, all the way to his most recent studio album in 2014, Out Amongst the Stars, which was released after his passing. Johnny Cash had a tremendous amount of songs that touched the hearts of not just country fans, but any fan of any music. And just to name a few more that really stood out during his career, Don't Take Your Guns to Town, A Boy Named Sue, Ring of Fire, One Piece at a Time, Get Rhythm, Big River, and, and how about the success that Cash, Waylon, Willie, and Christofferson had during their time together as the Highwaymen? The list can just go on and on for Johnny Cash and his music this, this man could make uh, was just phenomenal. And even the covers sounded as if he wrote the song and every line and every lyric came straight from his emotions or his own life. Take Hurt, for instance. Cash may have been a little older at that time that he did the song, but that sweet baritone voice still resonated every bit of lyric, emotion, and line in that song. Another thing that needs to be pointed out regarding Johnny Cash and his music are the amount of awards that he won throughout his career. If you can believe it, Cash won 13 Grammy Awards and was nominated for 35. Completely insane and it just goes to show you again that he not only reached country music fans but also fans in every other genre in his music. He also won several CMA Awards for Album of the Year, Single of the Year, and even took home the CMA CMA Entertainer of the Year Award in 1969 along with Male Vocalist of the Year. Oh, and not to mention too, uh, only Johnny Cash and Elvis Presley are inducted in both the Country Music Hall of Fame and the Rock and Roll Hall of Fame. So if for whatever reason you ever had a question about how good Johnny Cash really is, then I'm going to tell you to think again because Johnny Cash is a legendary, absolutely legendary performer. Even with all of the wonderful music and fame for Johnny Cash, there were some hiccups along the way. But sometimes it was just Johnny being Johnny, the rebel outlaw that he was known to be. And out of his lifetime, Cash was arrested seven times under the allegations of different things like drunken public, possession of drugs, reckless driving. But one of the most talked about arrests was when he was arrested for trespassing in Starkville, Mississippi. Forget this, picking flowers. Now this story is a pretty popular one which followed Cash throughout his years, but for the ones who have not heard it, uh, Cash may have been under the influence of alcohol when he made this decision to go and pick flowers out of an unknown person's yard. When he was arrested and taken to the local jail, he ended up beating up the jail cell and uh, kicking it time and time again, breaking his toe. Um, he even reflected on this night in his At San Quentin album, which is a sequel to his first prison album, Johnny Cash at Folsom Prison. Since we are already speaking about kicking, we might as well get into talking about how Johnny Cash was banned from the famous Grand Ole Opry. It happened back in 1965 
Johnny Cash made his way to the stage intoxicated, uh, but during his performance, he decided to smash out all of the lights at the edge of the stage. Cash even spoke about that night, according to a report from 60 Minutes, where he said, I don't know how bad they wanted me in the first place, but the night I broke all the footlights on the stage with the microphone stand, they said they couldn't use me anymore. So I left and used that as an excuse to really get wild and wound up in the hospital with my third time I broke my nose. At the time, you know, Cash may not have really gave a damn, but unfortunately and tragically, he, he did battle with alcohol and drug abuse and the lowest point of his life uh, came about after you know two years from that incident at the Grand Ole Opry. Um, he even spoke about this as well according to the same report with 60 Minutes. He said, I decided that I could never face anybody again. I had gone back on my word with everybody. So many times I'd hurt them and I'd lied to them that I thought I'd just crawl off in a cave and die. Going into where things became a little bit more positive for Johnny, now earlier I know I spoke of his first wife, Vivian, but three years later, after being banned from the Grand Ole Opry and having one of the roughest times of his life, Johnny Cash then married his second wife, June Carter, on March 1st, 1968. A little bit about that, Cash and Carter first met in 1956 at the Grand Ole Opry. They were introduced to each other by Elvis Presley, um, and then June actually became a backup singer for Johnny Cash. Now, their relationship did face some ups and downs, um, and there was a time that Johnny questioned whether or not June had love for Elvis Presley, especially after finding some love letters and getting so mad that he threw them in the lake. But ultimately, in the end, Johnny and June went on to live a wonderful life together. Unfortunately, June Carter passed away on May 15th, 2003 from complications uh, with a re recent heart surgery. And later that same year, on September 12th, 2003, the man in black, Johnny Cash, passed away after complications with diabetes. It would take more than 100 days to really get into what Johnny Cash did throughout his music career, did throughout his life. But the bottom line is this. Johnny Cash was a pioneer and an influential person on and off the stage. Not only was he huge in the music industry, huge in country music, but he was also an author. He wrote books. He was an ordained minister. And he even wore black for those who were in need, the hopeless, and the hungry. Johnny Cash is definitely a hero, and a hero for music. And man, does it feel good to know that he was all for country. That will be it for today's video. Make sure you hit that subscribe button down at the bottom and turn those notifications on for breaking updates on your favorite country artist and all the news coming right out of Music City. Y'all stay country. And in this case, walk the line.